today we will be discussing the unit number three which is on to the post vibrations and the lesson number one is discussing the concepts on to the intro introduction to the post vibrations so let us see what is post vibrations so earlier we were writing down the equation of motion as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to zero now that zero from the right hand side is going to replace with some impressed or applied or imposed force so the external energy supplied to the system can be called as applied force or imposed motion it can be in terms of displacement velocity or acceleration now we are only concentrating upon the harmonic excitation which also results in harmonic response for the case study so the response can be a steady state response or it can be a transient response from a non-harmonic excitation so the harmonic excitation that is the harmonic force and function can be treated or can be expressed as f0 into e raised to i omega t plus phi or it can be a function of time which can be expressed as f0 cos of omega t plus phi and also it can be treated as f0 sine omega t plus phi wherein f0 is the amplitude of the force omega is the frequency of the excitation and phi is the phase angle so the response of a linear system subjected to harmonic excitation is also harmonic and the response amplitude depends on the ratio of excitation frequency to the natural frequency so some of the common harmonic force and functions are rotating machines or the rotating elements with large residual unbalance imbalance regular shading of vortices caused by laminar flow across slender structures like chimneys bridges overhead cables mooring cables also the vehicle which are traveling on a pavement also having harmonic excitation if the surfaces are sinusoidal surfaces also the structure excited by regular ocean or water waves is also example of harmonic function so basically the forces which are naturally caused are more probably into the harmonic functions and that is why we are limited our study to harmonic functions so the equation of motion when a force is applied to a viscous damp single degree of freedom system and the equation for this can be written as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f of t and which is a non-homogeneous differential equation so the general solution of this differential equation is a non-homogeneous differential equation will be sum of uh, two solutions one is homogeneous solution and another is particular solution so the homogeneous solution represents the solution to the free single degree freedom system which is known to decay over time for all the conditions of under damp critical damp and over damp and the general solution therefore reduces to a particular solution x of p which is function of time which represents the steady state vibration which exists as long as the forcing function is applied so the examples of homogeneous solution the graph what we are getting in terms of t onto the x axis and onto the y axis we are having x of h which is a function of time so the homogeneous solution which is having decaying vibration at the natural frequency whereas the particular solution 
which is having a steady state amplitude. You can see inside the figure, the amplitude of the graph is remains constant. So this is at excitation frequency. So the homogeneous solution is having decaying vibration, which is at natural frequency, whereas the particular solution is at steady state vibration and which is having excitation frequency. Now the complete solution of the forced vibration is comprising of two beats that is homogeneous solution and particular solution. You have to superimpose those graphs onto each other to get the total solution. So you are seeing here the total solution. So we are seeing here the total solution is superimposed graph of homogeneous solution and particular solution. So we'll have a case of transient vibrations and we have a case of steady state vibrations. Now let us assume that we are discussing the concept of forced vibrations which is harmonically excited, which is having single degree of freedom system and which is undamped. So the magnitude of the force is written as F0 cos omega t. Now the equation of motion, if there is no damping, the damping coefficient c becomes 0. That's why the equation of motion reduces to mx double dot plus kx is equal to F0 cos omega t. So the homogeneous solution is x h t, which is equal to c1 cos omega n t plus c2 sin omega t wherein the natural frequency is under root k by As the excitation is harmonic, the particular solution is also harmonic with the same frequency. So the frequency of excitation is omega. That's why x of p, which is equal to x, capital X, cos omega t, wherein capital X is the amplitude of vibration and small omega is the excitation frequency. So if I are substituting this x of p into the equation of motion and if I are solving this for the value of x, we get capital X is equal to F0 upon k minus m omega square. So if I are putting into the complete solution, the complete solution x becomes xh plus xp. So xh we have already written as c1 cos omega nt plus c2 sin omega nt. And x of p can be written as in terms of x, we can write down f0 upon k minus m omega square and cos omega t remains as it is. Now, if I are applying the initial conditions, that is x at t is equal to 0 is x0 and x dot at t is equal to 0 is x dot 0. If I are solving for the value of c1 and c2, we can get the C1 as X0 minus F0 upon K minus omega square and C2 as X dot 0 upon omega. And now the complete solution, if I are putting the values of C1 and C2, it becomes X of T is equal to X0 minus F0 upon K minus M omega square plus omega NT plus X dot 0 upon omega N into sine omega NT plus F0 upon k minus m omega square cos omega nt. So the maximum amplitude of the steady state solution can be written as x by delta st, which is 1 upon 1 minus omega by omega n square, where delta st is F0 by k. So x by delta st is the ratio of dynamic amplitude to the static amplitude, and it is also known as amplification factor or it is also known as magnification factor and the frequency ratio is omega by omega n which is the dependent factor for the value of x by delta s. So if I are drawing the graph of it you can see here when omega by omega n is less than 1 the denominator of the steady state amplitude is positive and the amplitude amplification factor increases as omega approaches to the natural frequency omega n. The response is in phase with the excitation. Whereas when the omega by omega n is greater than 1, the denominator of the steady state amplitude is negative and the amplification factor is redefined as x by delta st is equal to 1 by 
omega by omega n square and this one and the steady state response becomes x of p which is equal to minus x cos omega t which shows that the response is out of phase with the excitation and decreases to zero as omega increases so you can see in the graph onto the x axis we are having omega by omega n and onto the y axis we are having x by delta s Similarly, if you are drawing the graph of omega by omega n versus x by delta st, which is nothing but the magnification factor, amplification factor, when omega by omega n is lesser than 1, the denominator of the steady state amplitude is positive and the amplification factor increases as the omega approaches to the natural frequency omega n. And the response is in phase with the excitation. When omega by omega n is greater than 1, the denominator of the steady state amplitude is going to be negative and the amplification factor is redefined as x by delta st is equal to 1 by omega by omega n square minus 1. And the steady state response becomes x of t is equal to minus x cos omega t. It shows that the response is out of phase with the excitation and decreases to 0 as omega increases to infinity. And when omega by omega n is equal to 1, the denominator of the steady state amplitude is 0 and the response becomes infinitely large, which can be shown in the figure. And the condition in omega by omega n is equal to 1, that is omega is equal to omega n, is known as resonance. So from the practical point of view, you have to uh, avoid the resonance to reduce the vibrations or to eliminate the vibrations completely. Now, if we are going for the complete solution of the first vibratory system, which is undamped, we have already seen the uh, complete solution. For two different conditions, that is omega by omega n is lesser than 1, the solution becomes x of t is equal to a cos omega n t plus 5 plus delta s t upon 1 minus omega by omega n square into cos omega t. And the second condition that is for omega by omega n is greater than 1, x of t becomes a cos omega n t plus 5 minus delta s t upon 1 minus omega by omega n square cos omega t. Take care of that minus sign because it gives a lot of complications in the future problems. The complete solution is the sum of two cosines with the frequencies corresponding to the natural and forcing that is excitation frequencies. So you can see here the graph when omega by omega n is lesser than 1 and omega by omega n is greater than 1. So the amplitude, how it varies, it has been shown. Now, the steady state solution, if the forcing function is harmonic, that is F0 cos omega t, the equation of motion of a single degree of freedom system with viscous damping is written as mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to 0 and the forcing magnitude is f0 cos omega t. So the steady state response is given by the particular solution which is also expected to be harmonic. So x of x of p is written as capital X which is magnitude into cos omega t minus 1. So the amplitude and the phase angle to be determined. You can do it mathematically also, analytically also, and you can do it with graph also. So here we are only seeing it by the, here we are going to see it with the analytical method. So substituting the value of xp into the steady state equation, it becomes capital X into k minus m omega square into cos of omega t minus phi minus c omega sin omega t minus phi is equal to f0 cos omega t. Applying the trigonometric relationships that is cos omega t minus phi is equal to cos omega t into cos phi plus sin omega t into sin phi then sin omega t minus phi can be written as sin omega t into cos phi minus cos omega t into sin phi. We can obtain x is equal to f0 upon k minus m omega square bracket square minus c omega square 
raised to 1 by 2 and phi is equal to a tan c omega upon k minus m omega square. So the for the particular solution x of p is equal to x cos omega t minus phi. So alternatively the amplitude and the phase can be written in terms of the frequency ratio r is equal to omega by omega and then mp coefficient theta. So x by delta is written as 1 upon under root of 1 minus omega by omega n square whole bracket square plus 2 theta omega by omega n square. So we can substitute the value of omega by omega n as r and we can rewrite the equation as 1 by under root of 1 minus r square whole bracket square plus 2 theta r whole bracket square. And the phase angle phi is written as a tan into 2 theta omega by omega n upon 1 minus omega by omega n square. Again, it can be written as a tan 2 theta r upon 1 minus r square. For this, we are having two graphs. The first graph is related to omega by omega n and we are having m as the magnification factor. So you can see here when omega by omega n is equal to 0, the value of magnification factor is 1 irrespective of value of omega. So at the start, whenever the system is going to vibrate, the magnification factor is 1. That is how much static deflection we are having that much dynamic amplitude we are going to have. Now, as the omega by omega n value increases and it is lesser than 1, you can see from the equation that the value of amplitude x depends upon the value of theta. So, more the value of theta, lesser the amplitude. So, if the value of theta is 0, the Amplitude x becomes infinite at omega by omega n is equal to 1. And if you want to finite the dynamic amplitude, you need to improve the value of zeta. So you can see here the point value, point 1 value of zeta, the amplitude of dynamic vibrations becomes finite or zeta is equal to 0.2, again it is going to get decreased, zeta is equal to 0.5, it has been all again decreased and zeta is equal to 1, there is no peak. And when omega by omega n is greater than 1, the amplitude of vibration becomes lesser than 1. That is, ratio x by delta ST becomes lesser than 1. What it means that if you are having static deflection delta ST, the value of x becomes lesser than delta ST when omega by omega n is greater than so that's why if you want to limit the vibration amplitude, you have to operate the machine in the ratio wherein omega by omega n is greater than 1. Similarly, if we are talking about the phase angle, onto the x-axis we are having omega by omega n and onto the y-axis we are having phase angle. For value of omega by omega n is equal to 0, all the curves are starting from 0. So there is no phase difference. When omega by omega n is lesser than 1, all curves are in phase. And when omega by omega n is equal to 1, the phase angle becomes 90 degree. And when omega by omega n is greater than 1, the phase angle becomes 180 if the value of zeta is 0. And if you want to decrease that angle, then you have to increase the value of zeta. So, the magnification ratio at all frequencies is reduced with the increased amplitude. Some of the highlights what we have discussed are like this. The effect of damping on the magnification ratio is greatest at or near the resonance. The magnification ratio approaches to 1 as the frequency ratio approaches to 0. The magnification ratio approaches to 0 as the frequency ratio approaches to infinity. For zeta value between 0 to 1 by root 2, the magnification ratio maximum occurs at r is equal to under root of 1 minus 2 zeta square or omega is equal to omega n under root of 1 minus 
to zeta square, which is lower than both the undamped natural frequency omega n and the damped natural frequency omega d, which is equal to omega n into under root of 1 minus zeta square. When r is equal to under root of 1 minus 2 zeta square, we are having magnification factor which is maximum. And the maximum magnification factor can be measured when the damping ratio can be determined. When zeta is equal to 1 by root 2 into dm by dr, that is equal to 0, and r is equal to 0, when zeta is greater than 1 by root 2m decreases monotonically with increasing the frequency. So for undamped system, zeta is equal to 0, the phase angle is 0 degree, response in phase with the excitation for zeta or r value lesser than 1 and 180 degree response out of phase with the excitation for r greater than 1. For damped systems, zeta is greater than 0 when r is lesser than 1, the phase angle is lesser than 90 degree and the response lacks the excitation and when r is greater than 1, the phase angle is greater than 90 degree and the response leads to the excitation and it approaches 180 degree at the larger frequency ratios. For the damped system, zeta is greater than 0 when r is equal to 1, the phase lag is always 90 degree. So in single degree of freedom system, the phase is not that much significant, but once we go into the two degrees of freedom systems or multi degrees of freedom systems, it has more significance. So the complete solution is the sum of homogeneous solutions X, H and particular solution XP. So X is equal to X0 e raised to minus zeta omega nt into cos of omega dt minus phi 0 plus x capital X into cos omega d minus 5, where omega d is omega n under root of 1 minus zeta square, x and phi are given as before and x0 and phi0 are determined from initial conditions. So with this, we stop here.